All right. Um, I want to thank everybody for uh, being here today. I, I felt it was important uh, to, you know, get in front of everyone after the, the fall season. Obviously, I know we'll probably spend a lot of time on football today, but before we uh, get there, I really wanted to talk about uh, two other sports, uh, volleyball. Uh, really pleased with Adler and, and what our volleyball program has done this year, 20, 20 wins. And I think Adler's done a really good job of building it the right way. And I'm excited for them and the girls that, uh, you know, we get to host a uh, postseason tournament uh, this weekend. So uh, excited about uh, that. Uh, I'm also really pleased with uh, where Gary Higgins has our soccer program. Um, you know, we, we finished the, the regular season uh, in fourth place. Um, again, I felt like we made some really good progress there and just uh, exciting to, to see those two sports uh, flourish in, in a meaningful way. Um, obviously, big week for basketball this week. Uh, our women host Hampton uh, tomorrow uh, at 11, and then our men uh, host Wilmington and, uh, on Thursday night. Uh, certainly uh, anticipate a really good crowd there. Um, so excited about that. And then obviously the new additions to Menji's, the, the seats and the lights, I think has definitely created um, a, a, a good atmosphere. As it relates to our football program, um, I, obviously, uh, we have not met expectations uh, for uh, where this program uh, should be. Uh, and, you know, it, it starts with uh, certainly me, Coach Houston, our student athletes hadn't met their expectations either. Uh, I, I feel, um, you know, just terrible uh, with, with how the season played out. and. Uh, I know that we can do better. Uh, I know that it's going to take a lot of hard work uh, fr from everybody in this department uh, to, to get it turned around. And, and I do believe in Mike Houston. And, you know, I've talked to a lot of Pirate Club Hub members over the last uh, several weeks uh, that have shared their thoughts. And, um, you know, this is a special place. And uh, as I think about Pirate Nation, you know, the first word that, that comes to me is a very passionate fan base. And you, you can't have that passion both ways, like, uh, or one way. It, it runs both ways. Uh, I love it that we've got this great student support. Uh, we've got great fan support. Uh, and it's really, really good here when you win. Uh, you know, you go back to the previous two years, you know, there's nothing like it, but, but you can't have that passion just one way. Uh, it cuts both ways. And so when we're not doing well, I've, I've certainly heard and felt the passion on a, on a different level. Uh, and and that, that comes with the territory. And, and honestly, I'm thankful for that. And it's been really difficult, uh, you know, over the last several weeks because we're not where we want to be, and you hear about it every day. Uh, but I'm thankful for that because, you know, the worst thing that could happen is have apathy where no one cares. And, you know, there are a lot of places out there that they don't care, and, and this is not one of those places. So I, I am thankful for that. You know, as I look at uh, where we go from here, and, and again, hearing from our, our Pirate Club members and, and uh, constituents, you know, there, there's a lot of discussion about how, how did this happen in year five, you know? And r really about two years ago, uh, the, the world of intercollegiate athletics changed. And, and it changed with NIL and the transfer portal. And, and so I, I look at it each year as we, we almost, you know, I started in this business being an athletic director and, and having a certain mindset of, you know, you, you, you bring in these uh, student athletes as freshmen, 
you develop and grow them, and by the time they're they're you know junior senior, you can you can have a pretty good team. And the reality is, you you are making significant roster moves every year. Uh, just you know the the reality of what the new world is, and and so you almost as it relates to you know football, you you almost need to think more like a a, a general manager. You, you know. Uh, okay, we, we need these certain pieces and we need NIL money to, to go out to the market to try to get these. And so a, as you think about what next year looks like, I, I do feel like, uh, you know, Mike being our head coach, making what adjustments and tweaks that we need to make, uh, that is going to put us in the best position to be successful next year. And we do need change. Uh, you, you know, everybody saw, you know, we, we see what the record is and, and, you know, we see where our, our shortcomings were. And I think everybody here is, you know, committed to fix it. Um, I've had really good conversations with our Pirate Club members over the last couple days as it relates to NIL and, and our pathway out of this. Uh, we are still in a unique position where we do have to uh, go and sign, you know, some freshmen that, uh, you know, some high school uh, players. Uh, but we're also going to need to, you know, go to the portal and, and, and make some significant changes as there. So uh, understand that is the, uh, the pathway forward. Um, I'm committed to it. Uh, I know it needs to get fixed. <coughs> Uh, Coach Houston knows it, it needs to get fixed, and uh, everyone's committed to doing that. We've had tremendous support from uh, the university and Chancellor Rogers, and um, we are going to get it fixed. Um, I'll open it up with some questions. With how much NIL has kind of changed the landscape of college football, as you mentioned, how much of a say can you really have as an athletic director? And where the money goes? Can you have any say? How does that work? Well, it, you know, NIL r really runs through a you know third party, either the collective, and I'll, we're we're very fortunate that we have the Boneyard Collective. They've been. Uh, you know, extremely supportive of our student athletes. And then we also have individuals that help with that. And, and I think uh, from my chair, the biggest thing that I can do is to continue to, to advocate for NIL and how important those opportunities are. Because I've said a number of times, you know, we're only as good as the players we have. If you look at the best teams in the country right now, um, you know, you, you can argue they have the best coaches. I probably would argue on the other side that those teams have the best players. And, <coughs> and uh, the, better, the better NIL that we have, the more opportunity we're ha we're, we will have to attract players. And I think it's important, too, like if you, if you look at our roster, you, you know, the, the other thing that gives me a, a, a uh, sense of hope and confidence is – you know, I think we had like 10 to 12 seniors this year. We're a very young team. And, and um, you know, if we can hold on to, uh, you know, those young players that we need to hold on to and, and supplement through recruiting, uh, we have a chance to flip this pretty quickly, in my opinion. John, you mentioned the, the year to year, you know, changes right now that it can be tough, but for you guys as, as an administration, what, what's your baseline expectations and goals for success for the football program going into each year? Well, I, I think to me on a very baseline level, we, we should play in a bowl game every year. Uh, and I think that is achievable and, and meaningful. Uh, and, I, and I do think we ought to compete for conference championships. You know, we're, we're in a position if you if you look at last year with the schools that were in our league and, and left to the, left to go to the Big 12, th there was a huge financial gap uh, b between us and, and those top schools. Uh, you know, if you look at budget-wise now, 
there's still a gap, but it's not quite near as far. So I, I do think we have all the things here uh, in place that we can win a conference championship here. And so my expectation is at minimum, we should be playing in a bowl game every year and we should be competing for conference championships and be in that upper tier of our league. John, I had a question as far as NIL is concerned. Will there be a push? I know you talked to the donors. I know that you directly in the athletic department can't like, like raise the money, but is there like a goal that you have in mind for the, the collective, like how much you would like to see for the football program and basketball program? You, you know, if, if you look at uh, where the NIL landscape is and you look at like our peers, um, and I'm not saying necessarily our peers in our league, I'm talking about our peers across the board, schools that look like us. Uh, I, I think from a football perspective, you, you know, I, I think it's gonna be a number, you know, 700,000 plus for football. Um, and, and, you know, obviously we have players that you, you want to keep. Uh, you know, we have a, some, some really good young players that I think, you know, you give them one more year of experience, they're going to grow and develop. Uh, and then we need that, you know, funds like that to obviously go to the portal and, and uh, have meaningful, you know, discussions about our NIL opportunities here. Obviously, there are other things in this world that cost money, and one of those being an indoor practice facility. What would your message be to the donors as far as balancing their donations, as far as you know, things here on campus, as well as investment in our student athletes? You know, the the I, I'm really pleased with where uh, our progress is on the indoor building. Uh, I, again, I've, I've stated that I think that project's going to be somewhere in the 22 to 25 million dollar range. Um, and we're, you know, just a little north of 15 million right now. Uh, so we've got, let's call it eight to 10 million to go. Um, I, I feel good about where that is. And we've got some significant ask out uh, with donors to help complete that project. I think really, if you look globally, it's probably the last big piece uh, from a facility standpoint that we need. I know we're also doing the baseball renovation, but I'm really talking about football. You know, from, from that point forward, you're focusing on renovations or upkeep. Uh, and so I think the indoor building is important, uh, but, but I go back to uh, we're only as good as the players that, that we have, and NIL is going to be really important in the type of roster we have next year. How, how much say in how national search does it go with hiring a new offensive coordinator? Well, um, I, I look at it, uh, I, my job as an athletic director, you know, I hire head coaches. Uh, I, I let the, the coaches put their staff together. Uh, now, obviously, um, you know, uh, Coach Houston and I have talked extensively you know, over the last, you know, week, 10 days about uh, an offensive coordinator and, and what the philosophy is and, and what we're looking for. And, you know, we'll certainly give an opinion uh, or share my thoughts of, you know, what I see and hear, uh, but, but ultimately it'll be his decision to make. What are the one or two changes you and Coach Houston talked about that have to happen to go from a two-win season to at least a bowl team or a conference championship team next year? You know, if you, if you look at our program, and, and I do feel this, um, I, I feel like we have a good program here. Uh, I, I'm very proud of the program that we have at East Carolina. I, I'm very disappointed in our record this year and, and all that comes with – you know, the, the record that we have. But I, I think about the culture in the locker room. You know, I see our student athletes, you know, pretty much every day I interact with them in, in some form or manner. Uh, I mentioned this last night on, on the radio station. 
you know, knock on wood, we, we, we haven't had behavior issues, uh, you, you know, we haven't had any major academic casualties. I mean, when you, when you think about a program and the culture and, and all those things, I, I do feel like we're in a good place there. Um, I, obviously, if you look on the field, uh, I saw what, what everybody saw. Uh, we're, we're pretty good defensively. Um, you know, we've done really well on special teams. We, we've got to, you know, make some changes offensively uh, to, to get our offense uh, more productive. Uh, and, and I think we can do that. Uh, you know, if you go back, you know, two years and, and look at our offense uh, was pretty productive and, you know, a lot of those pieces were, were student athletes that Coach Houston and his staff brought in. Um, you know, linemen, receivers, running backs, you, you know, the, those were all student athletes that, that Coach Houston and his staff recruited. And, um, you know, I think we're going to have to make a major push to, you know, go out and, and attract those same type players. How do you engage the, the season ticket holders who may be on the fence about you know, not happy with what they saw this year, thinking about maybe not renewing? You know, what do you say to those people to keep them and, and keep them you know, re renewing season tickets next year? You know, um, it, it, it's an important piece. Like, I, I feel like I'm very visible. Uh, I'm almost at every athletic event. Um, you know, I'm pretty engaging with uh, you know, everyone that I see, uh, and I've been engaged a lot over the last uh, several weeks. You know, we, um, when I arrived here, uh, you know, five, almost five years ago, you know, we, we were not very good at that point, and uh, it took a while to, to get to where we wanted to go uh, to, to have some success on the field. And, and I wouldn't put, I wouldn't point to, you know, one person or one thing that helped this department get there. Collectively, it was, you know, a lot of Pirate Club members. It was this community. It was businesses in this town. Like, like there were a lot of people that helped us, you know, get to, you know, winning seasons. And it's going to take those same people to help. Um, one of the things that we sell here is, you know, you look at when you come to a game and we have a lot of people in the stands, that, that makes a big difference. You know, when, when you're bringing in a recruit and there are people in the stands, there are a lot of places I go, on the league, go in this league and there's no one in the stands. And it's kind of a hard sell to recruits of, you know, hey, come, come play for us, look at all the people you'll get to play in front of. We don't have that problem. Uh, we need everybody to play a part, no matter what that part is. If it's buying a ticket, uh, you know, we need you to do that. Uh, if you can provide NIL, NIL opportunities to help us uh, recruiting, we need you to do that. Uh, and certainly if you can put your name on a building, uh, we need you to help with that. It, it's gonna take a collective group to, to get out of that. And, and really, like back to your first question on, you know, what, what do I want out of this program? Like, I, I want sustained success. Um, now, th that is a little more difficult to achieve now based on the transfer portal and NIL and all those things. And I think you're going to see it each year. You're going to see a successful team that the next year they may not be as successful because they had a really good year and then you know they lost a lot of players to the portal. But my my goal for for this program is to have sustained success, uh, and and I believe we can achieve that. Did the two win season catch you off guard this year? And then how do you sustain success in the NL? NIL portal era going forward? Well, well I, I think the, you know, only winning two games caught everybody by surprise, you, you know, and, and I'm not any different, uh, you, you know, than 
a, a lot of you. I'm sitting on the beach in the summer and, and I'm looking at the schedule and reading the, the book and, you know, counting them up. And, and uh, I counted higher than two, uh, you know, when, when I did that. Um, now, the, there, are, there are a lot of factors that, that go into that. And I, I think, you know, how we get to sustain success, I, I do think we're going to have to embrace, you know, what the new model is and that it is going to change year to year. Um, you, you know, based on NIL and the portal. And, and I hate that because that's really not, um, you know, it's not the collegiate model that I grew up with. And, and uh, I've been in the business a long time, but if you really think about the model, we've changed in the last two years, probably more so than we've changed in the last 20. And so you are seeing a lot of things that are happening that haven't happened before. And, you know, we, we, uh, we, we were affected this year and um, I, I think embracing the new model and then understanding what that new model looks like. You know, we're, we're also in a very unique position at East Carolina in that I think that we have to find the balance of attracting high school seniors to, to come here and supplementing it with players out of the transfer portal but because of your culture like if, if you you know you still want to be able to build a program not field a team you, you know there, there are a lot of places that you know you're going to field a new team every year and you're just completely flipping the roster when you do things like that, it really can erode the culture if you're not careful. And so I think it's important for us to find the balance between um, re recruiting high school student athletes because I do think we can attract some really good high school players uh, coupled with going to the portal and, and finding uh, student athletes that have significant playing experience. Last time we had one of these, you, we talked a lot about conference realignment and stuff. How does that play in what you're talking about? And do you foresee more like crazy changes <laughs> in this coming near future? You know, I, I don't think uh, conference realignment will stop for a little while. Uh, but I also look of you got to be successful where you are. Uh, like I was looking at the Big 12 standings uh, yesterday, and you look at the three schools that left us and, and, and where they are, and I, I think you've, you've got to figure out how to, to win where, where you are. And, and as you, you know, we, we're talking about the constant involvement, we're going to be in a 12-team playoff pretty soon. Um, I, I would argue the better we are in our league, there, there's probably going to be a better pathway for us in, in that 12-team playoff in the future. Um, but I do think conference realignment will continue to, to happen uh, for, for, for a little while. Moving forward with scheduling, would you like to do another Michigan-style game uh, down the road and just your overall thoughts on scheduling and getting teams here? Well, I, you know, scheduling is really important. Um, I, I do think we've got some good games for the future. I, I would like to play another game like that. The, the first time that could probably happen unless, uh, you know, a team drops us or buys us out, et cetera, is probably like 2029 and beyond. Uh, and, and I've reached out to a, a, a few teams to see you, you know, uh, one, uh, one silver lining, if you want to look at it like this, uh, th there, there are a lot of teams that are interested in us right now because of where our record is. And, and so normally uh, you, you know, I'll call a school and go, hey, will you play us? And like the previous two years, it was that uh, there's no chance we're playing you. And, and so um, I think it's important to schedule good games. 
I, I also like regional games, uh, non-conference wise. Uh, there's some schools in our region that I think we could play that would be, you know, really good matchups. Uh, I like the app series. Um, you know, that's a good game for us. Uh, look forward to hosting them here uh, next year. Um, so uh, we're going to continue to, to add and, and adjust to the schedule. Um, you mentioned earlier that uh, your expectation is to go to bowl games every year and compete in the upper half of the uh, conference or conference championships. Is the expectation for next season to be in a bowl game? And does Mike Houston have that same expectation? Yeah, I, you know, Mike and I, I, I talk to him every day, usually multiple times a day, and um, he, he knows where we are. Like, he, he wants sustained success. He knows that, uh, you know, we ought to be playing in a bowl game every year. That, that is achievable. Uh, and, and being in the upper third of our league is certainly achievable. It, and, you know, when, when you win a conference championship or play for it, um, you know, typically you have a older veteran team that has been together. You, you know, look, look at Tulane. Uh, they've been ultra stable there. Uh, they've been able to add some pieces. Uh, obviously, SMU has done a good job over the last three, four years. So, like, when you compete for a conference championship, you do have to have, you know, some older guys that have been in the program and understand what, what winning looks like. Uh, but I certainly think that is achievable here. Switching gears a bit, Coach Schwartz put out a pretty lengthy statement about the, the Cam Hayes situation. Any thoughts you can add on that? And also just the, the whole waiver thing in, in college sports right now with the 2000 transfer, it just seems to be getting a lot of blowback. Uh, and your thoughts on that? Yeah, it, it is, um, you know, there's been a lot of change in our uh, in our industry. Um, you, you know, you look at two-time waivers; they're difficult to to get. And then you see, you know, some other schools that are getting them for a variety of reasons. And we all talk to one another. Like it's not like, you know, if a if a school something happens at a school, it's not like we're not talking to them and know you know, what they did or how they did it. And so obviously, um, you know, we're gonna continue the process and, and uh, continue to advocate for CAM uh, in, in hopes that um, they'll, they'll, you know, make a, a different decision. Uh, I think it's warranted. Um, and, and so we're gonna continue to advocate on his behalf and, and uh, do whatever we can do on our end to help support him and, and make it, uh, you know, a different outcome.